Hey, what's going on you guys? Welcome back to 3D Print Farm. Today I'm going to teach you how to take those lithophanes that we all know and love and turn them into something cool. Like this. Right here, right now on 3D Print Farm. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to 3D Print Farm. I know most of us know what a lithophane is. There are tons of tutorials out there, but basically a lithophane is a way to take a photograph and 3D print it in such a way that when light passes through it, the photograph like magically appears. But today I'm gonna teach you how to make this Coke can. Now, you don't have to make just Coke cans. Check out some of these examples. Hey, so what'd you guys think? Pretty awesome, huh? Let's get to the tutorial. Okay guys, let's jump right into making this cool Coca-Cola can. But the first thing we need to do is head on over to a website called Luban3D.com. That's L-U-B-A-N, the number 3D.com. Now, to kind of preface this of how I I've kind of stumbled across Luban and what I was really looking for was how to cut this guy out with my laser. And because this, this kind of stuff just amazes the crap out of me. And if you look at some of these other objects here, I mean, here's one here. Um, people cut these out with their laser with wood or cardboard, and these things just turn out amazing. And they're all stacked up in a, in a particular way that you glue them together. They usually use dowels. To make sure everything lines up but yeah I, I really wanted to do this but the problem was is the software that was initially used to create this which was 123d make was no longer available now it spun off into fusion 360 and it went off into slicer uh, it you know I, I really didn't want to go down that path so I started doing some research and I came across Lubon and really Lubon can do this. I mean, if you look down here, you can see that it can generate 3D models in that stack formation, and that's exactly what I wanted it to do. In fact, it does some of these other cool items here with an orthogonal hash or a radial hash, lots of really cool stuff. But what I didn't realize is it did lithophanes, and as you all know, lithophanes have have been around for a while and a lot of folks have printed those on their 3D printers. Uh, most recently people have been using their resin printers. But what I really liked about this is the creator, Lu Jia Chen, uh, came up with a new, uh, I guess, plugin or, or you'd say, or, or a new feature of his uh, you know, existing lithophanes called the tattoo mode. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today is the tattoo mode for Lubon. Now, what you're going to need to do is head on over to the download Lubon section. I, I chose the, the Google Drive. There's instructions uh, on how to do it in English, French, Spanish, German. Um, the instructions are here. Uh, that's the first thing you'll need to do is install Lubon on your PC or your Mac and then we'll get started from there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close all this out or minimize this and I am going to start up Lubon. You can see it's a very uh, simple interface. Uh, since we're going to be making the Coke can today, we're going to be using the tattoo lithophane. So I'm going to go to File, slide down to Create, 
and I'm going to create a lithophane. So it's file create lithophane. And what it will do is populate a little pop-up menu on the left here. And as you can see, the shape is already defaulted to tattoo. The reason why it did this is because the last time I used Lubon, I was building a tattoo lithophane. Now, if you had chosen any of the other items in here, and upon closing Lubon and you get back into the program, it would default back to the one that you were using, which is kind of a cool feature. So let's get right into it. So first of all, we need to grab a 3D model. Now you'll want to use a 3D model that really doesn't have a lot of vertices. You want to choose something that's um, you know, like either a cylindrical model or a, a round model. I've seen people uh, use bottles before, which is which is kind of cool. Uh, anything that you're gonna you're gonna take the uh, an image and wrap it around the object. So again, we're dealing with a aluminum can. I went out to Thingiverse and found a really great example of an aluminum can. I'm gonna place it in the description below. Here's our aluminum can. I simply hold my left mouse button in and rotate around. I can see the entire object. This is just an STL of an aluminum can. Now as you can see here, this is not necessarily a warning, but it is a pop-up that says that the resolution is set to 10 temporarily. So it is set to a low resolution on purpose because when you add a photograph to this and it this program, the tattoo lithophane mode in Lubon, will calculate the lithophane on the fly so it doesn't do it after you save it it calculates it on the fly and lithophanes the higher the resolution that you get the more processing power that it requires and it will really hog down your program if you set this resolution too high uh it's it's going to bog down the program and potentially make it make it crash so ask me how i know about that so uh, if you look over here in this particular box again it is set the default is set to 10 just like it says up here so the next thing i want to do is after selecting your 3d model you'll want to go to select your photograph now i chose a um, again we're going to use coca-cola as an example so here's a coke can label I'm going to select it and click open and as you can see it wraps really nicely around the can. Now yours probably will not look like this initially because again these uh, settings here will save the save the default but I'm gonna go through these and we're gonna exp I'm gonna explain kind of going from the bottom up to show you what all these things mean. First thing we're gonna look at is the photo scale. This is the photo scale along the x-axis and the photo scale along the y-axis. So I have my photo scale set to 0.89 and usually you know typically it's one uh, set to one on the y scale, one on the x scale, but watch what happens when I set it to one on the y scale. Again any changes that you make in Lubon and any of these text boxes you need to press the enter key. It's very important that you press the enter key on the keyboard, otherwise uh, your anything that you've made changes to will not take effect unless you press the enter key. You simply, there goes my coffee. You, you simply cannot tab between, um, and that was an empty cup by the way, so no worries. You simply cannot tab between each of the text boxes. So when I press the enter key, you'll notice that the photo stretched along the y-axis and the photograph is up here in the top, it's in the bottom, it's just kind of ugly, you know, unless you wanted a lithophane to look that way, you most certainly could. But I'm going to change this to 0.89 and press enter, and now you can see the photo is now nicely uh, wrapped along the vertical axis here, on your y-axis, uh, using 0.89. The same way um, with the this this guy here, the center X and center Y, is how the photo is centered on your object. So again, before your photo scale is actually scaling the 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 photograph up and down, uh, this has to do with centering the object. So uh, the reason why the center Y is set to 0 0.001 is if I set it to let's say 0 0.1 
and look and you'll see that the the image is crawled up the side of the can so I'm going to change that back to 0.001 and now it's back back to normal so uh, these two guys right here, the minimum thickness and the max thickness, are the thickness of the lithophanes. So I know you guys have printed lithophanes before, and you it, it looks like that you know you've got either filament PLA or resin, and it looks like someone has carved the the image into the resin or carved it into the PLA. That carving there the the, uh, these minimum thickness and maximum thickness have to deal with the depth. So your minimum thickness is the thinnest part of the lithophane and the max is the thickest part of the cuts in the lithophane. Now you're probably asking yourself, well this looks kind of cool, but how do I know what the lithophane looks like? Great question. Go down here to your backlight feature, turn your backlight off, and now you, you'll see what the actual lithophane will look like uh, after it's printed. And again, you can adjust these. Let's say I adjust this max thickness to two and click enter. You can see it's like kind of ghosted on there. I mean, if you wanted a lithophane to, um, to have like really low cut lines in here or just uh, low depth, by all means, you know, you could make changes. I'm going to leave mine at five. So now everything, uh, to me looks, looks great. Okay. Everything looks looks fantastic uh, I'd like to print this now one thing the the very last thing that you do before you print this is you want to adjust again back to this resolution because if I leave it as a resolution of 10 it is going to look like garbage it's going to be really pixelated the, the the photograph will be pixelated along your image and you don't want to do that so I'm gonna go and change this to a reasonable number let's say I'm gonna change this number two two I'm gonna click enter now again it's gonna take it's gonna take a just a little bit to make this happen and it doesn't take a, a whole lot of time but it takes just just a second or two there we go so now you can check this out I mean now you've got this hey it's on Francais here so I've got the French coca-cola can here now everything looks really great. In fact, if I turn the backlight off, yeah, check that out. You've got all these really nice cut lines that are not pixelated, so that looks fantastic. So now I am super happy the way everything looks. Of course, you see the file size you know, jumped here quite a bit uh, when, when we had it set to 10 versus uh, a resolution set to 2. So I'm going to turn the backlight back on and now I'm going to save my model. So now we're basically going to save this as an STL. Luan wants you to, uh, uh, it's asking for a folder. I created a Coke can folder a little earlier. I'm going to select that folder and I'm going to select it and it's going to do its thing. And as you can see that you get the little object circle there is basically saving it and it looks like it is completed so I'm going to bounce over to my desktop and look inside the, uh, the Coke can. Let me drag this over here. Here we go. Okay so as you can see I've been doing quite, <laughs> been doing quite a few of these so we're going to pick the most recent one which would be this guy right here. So there, there's my uh, my Coke can, STL. Let's see, was that the right one? No, wait a minute, it was this one. I just got ahead of myself. Sorry about that. So here is my here's my Coke can, STL. Again, you could pull this into any of your favorite slicers, because basically this is just an STL. You can pull it into your favorite slicers, pull it into Cura, pull it into Simplify 3D, you can pull it into Prusa Slicer, and print it on your FDM printers. But today I am going to be printing this on my LU Mars 2 Pro using Chi2Box. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to go over into Chi2Box. 
and it probably will show a picture of a Coke can that I've been dinking around with, as it always does. There it is. It's not the one I want. It's giant, but so I have I've got Chitu Box set up correctly for the LU Mars Pro 2. I'm going to go and grab the file, and I'm going to grab the latest one, which was the one from 1208 today. And as you can see, it's going to be gigantic. And in order to scale that, go over to your scale button, and you can either click the scale to fit. I usually like to get it a little bit smaller. I believe Coke cans um, are around 130-ish uh, millimeters tall. I may have to go a little bit smaller than that to get it to fit on this build plate. So I'm going to go just a little bit smaller here. And as you can see, you've got the nice looking Coke can there. As you can see, you've got the nice little bubbles along the side there. That looks really kind of cool. And the cool thing about this model is when I got it from Thingiverse, I didn't realize that it was actually hollow, which really kind of saves me some time. So in order to save on resin, because you don't want to print this dude solid unless you want to just use up a ton of resin, is poke a hole in it. So I'm going to punch a hole in the bottom of this guy right here. So I'm going to turn this up so I can see it. I'm going to go dig a hole. And I believe, let's see, I'm going to add a hole. I'm going to set this. I've got my size set to 40 millimeters. I'm going to add a hole. And that, that may be too big. Let me shorten that up to about 30. All right there. Add a hole. There we go. I'm going to put a hole right there. There we go. So now it's going to use a. It's going to use. Um, it'll have a spot for my supports to go up inside and uh, cover the top of the can because you can actually print this thing kind of at an angle. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set it over here. I'm going to turn it just a hair on its side there so I don't get any islands or anything like that when printing this dude. So really all I'll get is just some supports that are coming up through the middle to support the top of the can, which is fine because you don't really see any of them anyway, uh, which is kind of nice. So I'm gonna do my supports here. Pull it around here so you can see it. And it's not exactly what I wanted. I don't want these here, so I'm going to remove them. I'm going to go back. I'm going to angle it just a little bit this way. Now I'm going to go back here again. I'm going to wait till it. That's a processing thing. And I'm going to click all again. And it should, if I've angled this correctly, is there we go. It won't. That way I don't have any um, supports on the side. So everything should print just fine like this. In fact, if you go back here and click slice um, using Uncle Jesse's uh, vroom vroom uh, settings, as you can see, this is going to take less than three hours to print a full-size resin Coke can. Lithophane. So yeah. Uh, if you want to see Uncle Jesse's vroom vroom settings, I will place a link in the description below to his video that shows how to do that. Basically, what you are doing in a nutshell is you are adjusting the lifting speed. You can see my lifting speed is way up there, and it, it tends to work really, really well with shortening your print times on a lot of your resin prints. So. With that being said, let's head over to the printer and see how this bad boy printed out. On 3D Print Farm, I want to give a big shout out to Mr. Luja Chin. He's one of the creators of Lubon. If you use Lubon to create one of these cool lithophanes, Please make sure and join their Lubon Facebook group. Uh, Luja is out there and he answers quite a few questions 
there's a lot of folks that share their prints and I also want to thank the fine folks that shared their prints in the little video montage I had at the beginning of the video. In fact, here are their names right here. I want to thank all those guys for allowing me and giving me permission to provide their prints to show to you guys. Once again, I want to thank each and every one of you. Oh, I almost forgot. If you want to get a really cool cover for any of your resin printers, doesn't matter if it's an Elegoo Mars, an Anycubic Photon, it could be the Frozen Sonic Mini, make sure and check out these ripstop covers from Mach 5. My friend Christopher Lannon over there, he makes an awesome cover. I'm gonna put links in the description below so you can take these covers like this and place them over your resin printer like this. Keeps all the dusties out and keeps your printer nice and nice and dark when you're printing. So, I also have a question for all of you guys. What do you guys think about me doing a live? I've never done a live stream. So, some of my friends have been telling me, hey Garrett, you need to do a live stream, answer questions, do all that kind of crazy stuff. You guys want me to do a live stream? Drop them in the comments below. Say, hey, Mr. 3D Print Farmer, do a live stream for us. And I'll do it. Catch you next time on 3D Print Farm. Bye now. Hey you guys, welcome back to 3D Print Farm. Yes, today I'm going to teach you how to take an object Hey, welcome back to 3D Print. Hey guys, welcome back to 3D Print Farm. Yes, Hey, welcome back to 3D Print Farm. Yes, today I'm going to teach you how to take a photograph and wrap it. Up. <laughs>